just keep going, you know, keep, find something and stick, stick to it. You, you've got to test stuff for four five, six months, whatever you try before you want, you give up on it. And, and, and again, I would get to that point for five, six months, what, like do what I did. I kept going because I, I knew I had this big need, big want, this big why that I could not give up. And because honestly, what else are you going to do? If you're not going to do this and you're going to, what else are you going to do? Well, you will learn by losing because losing sucks. Everybody hates it, but you got to go through that. You got to crawl through the broken glass in this business to get the prize. It just takes, it just takes it. And nobody's born knowing this stuff. What's up, y'all? So we've got an amazing topic today and actually a returning Carrot Cast. Uh, I was going to say Carrot Camper, not yet, a <laughs> Carrot Cast yeah. guest. Um, but we're going to be talking about part-time investing, but getting a full-time income. And it's something right before I hit record, uh, Dennis, who I'm going to reintroduce you guys to, said, I'm so glad I'm, we're talking about this topic because I'm, I'm a big flag waver for um, the idea of part-time investing and getting a full-time income. Well, we'll talk about how he's doing it. We'll talk about what has changed since the last time he was on the carrot cast because he's made a lot of cool changes to to his business but also guys he's getting a job again <laughs> so we're, we're gonna be talking about this stuff and i love it right. so welcome back on the carrot cast uh, mr dennis facet thanks it's great to be here again trevor i really appreciate uh, you having me on again man so we we dove into a lot of stuff your backstory yeah. all that stuff in the in the previous episode so what we're gonna do guys and gals is we're gonna link up dennis's previous episode right below here if you're watching this on our website or if it's on YouTube in the show notes. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, whatever the heck, heck it's called right now, go to <clears throat> carrotcast.com, carrotcast.com, and find this episode in our archives with Dennis, Dennis Facet. And uh, you guys will be able to find the link there to the show notes that has the other link to it too. And I think these two episodes are gonna be, be amazing, kind of the one-two punch, because like I said, we give his backstory there. Uh, and, and in there, he really tells about why he really has chosen to to not uh, you know to go full 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 time into investing, guys. He makes full time income doing it, but he still has a job, and uh, and and he has a whole backstory in there. And also, he talks a lot about what he was doing at that point. When did we do that episode? It's probably it's eight months ago. I don't know, August, September, ago? something like that. Yeah, cool. So it, yeah. it was a little while ago. Yeah, and so a lot has changed since then. So link it up. <laughs> you guys go check it out. But what I want to do right now, yeah. As for those of you guys who are kind of coming on fresh and didn't listen to the episode, let's kind of give the really high level Dennis, uh, who are you? Where do you live? What, what is your business? What do you do? And then, um, then we'll kind of dive into the transition you're having with going back to going back to work. But sure. uh, who are you? Where do you live? What do you do? Yeah, so Dennis Fassett, I'm in the Metro Detroit market. I cover Metro Detroit, which is mainly three counties oh. and then portions of a couple of other counties. Um, I am... Really, uh, the crazy thing is I'm not even in really in real estate. That's the dirty secret. I'm a marketing guy. And so it's taken me 15 years to really finally admit that, um, that I'm a marketing guy, not really an investor right now because I'm a, I do lead generation. Yep. Um, I just hit 16 years in the business last month. Um, the first Monday in January of 2004 was when I filed my first LLC ever in real estate. And so it's 16 years um, and it's been a wild ride. I got I got into real estate because I was afraid of losing my job. That actually happened. It didn't happen then, but it happened last year, actually. Mm -hmm. So right about this time. Um, and uh, so kind of to bring it forward, um, I was laid off. Um, I went to work for another real estate company, worked for them for a little while, helped them out. That ended. And I've been doing real estate kind of basically full time um, for the last few months. And it's been really cool. So mm -hmm. um, that's who I am. Um, my My prior life when I had a job, um, well, in my day job, I am, uh, I'm an IT program manager. So mm. um, my, my skill set is for the last 20 years running really big IT programs, uh, four or five, six million dollars a year budgets, 20, 30 people, really big stuff. Um, you know, not nuclear submarines, we're not building that or we're not curing cancer, but I'm, we're mm. doing, some, I, I've done some really cool stuff over the years. And so mm. then I'm going back to that here in another probably 10 days or so. So, Dude. um, yeah, so hey, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff happening, a lot, a lot of stuff's up in the air. Um, and I'm happy to walk folks through it and, and give them a sales pitch for, for, for doing real estate part-time like I'm doing it. It's just, it's been spectacular for me. Man, so let, let's give people a little bit of context here too. Yeah. I, know, I know in the last podcast you talked about 
kind of the scale that you've been able to part-time invest. Right. Um, but since then, you know, a lot of cool things have changed. So share whatever you're comfortable sharing, but yeah. uh, let's say the past 12 months, kind of what has your business looked like? Cause people might go, Oh cool. He's doing one deal a year. You know, yeah, like right. you're not, you're doing way more than that. What, what, right. what has your business looked like the past 12 months? Well, let's, let's go back a little further than that. Right. So, um, give people some context. I've been, I, you know, I've got an MBA in finance, um, multiple years ago. I've been doing this for 20 years. I've been working mm -hmm. for almost 30 years. So if you might think of what, what I might be making now, I don't want to talk in numbers, but yeah. I don't make, it, it's a, it's a very good salary. So, mm -hmm. Um, for the last three years, including last year, so let's call my salary X, I've made, working full time, I've make X. Well, in my in the last three years, I've made X, another X as well in real estate. Mm, cool. And so it's, I'm making two X. And so, and the, the funny thing is, and my, I've got a mentor here in the area, he keeps kicking, kicking me in the teeth saying, you should do real estate full time. The problem <laughs> is, is that honestly, it only takes me 12 to 15 hours in real estate to make the X I'm making in real estate when it's 40 hours in the job. But honestly, Trevor, I don't know how to make two X in real estate. That's mm -hmm. my issue right now. And that's mm -hmm. why I haven't just cut the ties with the job. Because I, and again, we can talk about the, the past 12 months where I've kind of tried doing that. Yep. I, I kind of think I see a path there, but I don't know how to do that. And mm -hmm. so that's why I'm still working. And again, I, and again, you do, I've been doing something this long. If you think about it, you may, I make a good salary. I've been doing it a long time. It's not that difficult. There's some challenges learning some new things or whatever, but I'm really good at this. And so it's mm -hmm. not like I'm, I'm making little rocks out of big rocks, you know, yep. in the quarry or anything like that. So I've got a you know, good job working in a good office with good people. Um, and it's, and it's enjoyable. So and you get all the benefits, I'm sure. Right. Like yeah. that's, that's important. That's really, yeah. Nice yeah I'm going to be getting a car at this new place and stuff, mm -hmm. company car, you know, and so there's a lot of cool stuff for a job. Once you have, again, again, with all due respect to folks that have jobs, I've been doing this a long time. And so I get the perks that come along with having mm -hmm. 20 years in, in the field. Yep. Right. And so it makes it really hard to leave it as well. Yep. No, for sure. I, I love it. And, and on the real estate side. So I think in the last episode you had shared, Quote me if I'm wrong in this, the previous 12 months, about 70, 77, 77 deals, I think the number was. Yeah. So that was There's in a lot. Uh, 18, I did 77 deals. I did a little less than that last year. I think I yep. was at 56 last year. Dude, and the reason amazing. is, that when I took my eye off the ball, when I went to work for this other company, I really focused on them and it, it's totally fine. I did, mm -hmm. it's, it was what I needed to do. And I did like 56 last year. So that's, Dude, that's amazing though. Like that, that, that's, that's crazy amazing. And, and that's, I want, I wanted that yeah. to get out here on, on yeah. this part of it. Cause it's going to give people context that, that you'll, you'll talk to a lot of people who are at masterminds and whatever, right. and they're doing three, five, seven deals a month. And like, yeah. so they're, gr you're, they're grinding away doing 60 hours a week. And yeah. are, are they, are they wiggling out a couple more bucks? Maybe, I don't know, but like it's, right. it's diminishing returns sometimes. Right. Um, unless, unless on the back end, we'll talk about this as we go, you're taking some of that cash and stacking bricks with buying cash flowing properties, right? That's where the, the, the end game is, or maybe, maybe right. rental properties aren't your gig. Like I love investing in companies. You know, I've, I've got a company that I invested in eight years ago. It's going to sell this year for a bunch of money, like nice. well into the millions nice. and I'm going to get a huge check from it. Like I love, I love investing in businesses and property. So nice. whatever it is, guys, take that income exactly. and invest it into the cash flow stuff. Exactly. Um, so we're going to dive into walking through people and, and kind of piggybacking off, off of the first episode. Like I said, guys, go listen to, to both of them. Right. But right. this is part of a series that we're going to be talking to investors who, and agents who are doing it part time and making it work and making it work really well. And then there should be time towards the end too, Dennis, where, where there might be an opportunity for us to kind of spitball some ideas on if you are wanting to go full-time with this and get it up to a higher number, uh, there's, some, there's a path there. And I, and I can kind of, kind of guide you there. But let, let's it, do yeah. this. So you're going through a transition right now. You had just mentioned where the previous a year, year and a half, you had been, um, you were con consulting. You got laid off from that job a year and a half ago. Yeah. You've been working with another investing company, consulting, but now you're going back in to get a job. You know, you're, yep. a job. you're going back into work full time. So what has your time looked like with your investing business since you have um, been laid off? Have you been 40 hours a week in it? Have it been 10 hours a week? Kind of what has your time been like? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. So that good question. So um, I actually got laid off about a year ago this time. So okay, cool. I've been, and then I went to work for the investing company and I was 40 hours roughly for per week with them. So I was mm -hmm. still doing real estate part-time, 
that mm-hmm. ended in July, August timeframe. Cool. And at that point I started to do kind of part-time consulting still in my field. Cool. And so it's really been since July, August that I've been really doing real estate more and kind mm-hmm. of, and I turning it into more of a full-time job. And so, cool. Um, and the cool thing was, it, it, I, the consulting was all done at home, uh, you know, out of my house. I would go in for meetings once in a while, but I had a lot of flexibility of working on real estate versus working on the consulting gig because the consulting gig wasn't full time. Mm. So it was really just project based and I just needed to work when I needed to work. So it was really a cool situation. Mm. Um, so what does the time look like? It, um, well, you know, my dad always told me that work always expands to fill the available time. Yep. So, so it's, uh, it, it really, I actually got less efficient if that mm sense. Mm -hmm. I was, um, back when I was working a full-time demanding full-time job and doing real estate, man, I was Mr. Hyper efficient. I knew what I had to get done. I had my list, you know, I got my list here. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I have my check. I got to get this, this, this done today. And I only got three and a half hours. So I need to get home, eat dinner, whatever, and then get to it and get and power through this crap. But when I went full time, I was like, Hey, I got all day to do this. (laughs) And it's like, and I got less done. The first couple of weeks were really just um, my, it shattered my confidence. It's like, Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't do this thing full time because mm. I can't figure out how to get started in the morning. Uh-huh. I started, and you know what I mean? It was like, I had no discipline anymore. So it was mm. a really, so I had to force myself to get back into a routine to get up and, and really start working. And I, I found that I still, so how, how do I say this? So before I had a, when I had a full-time job, I would do eight and maybe four hours later, you know, eight plus or minus commute and then four or five hours in the evening real estate. Mm-hmm. So 12, whatever, 12, 13 hours a day working. Um, but because that's what I had to do. I found that when I did the real estate stuff, I couldn't do 12 to 13 hours of real estate. I mm-hmm. just got burned out of it. So I thought I found myself gravitating more towards, okay, I need to do some more of this consulting stuff. So I can take my mind off of real estate. So when I go back to real estate, my mind will be fresh. Mm. Mm. So, um, but my discipline was the main thing being not having a full-time job anymore. I had to force myself to be disciplined. And it took a couple of weeks of, of, of really struggling with this because again, I had all the time in the world and that's the worst that's the worst person to give something to is somebody that's got all the time in the world to do it because it never gets done. Oh man. And, and dude, so, on, on, on the previous yeah. episode, so people might, might be wondering, okay, you know, what, what part of the business are you and how did you do 50 yeah. something deals in the past, you know, the past X amount of uh, past 12 months yeah. is you, you, like you said, you're the marketer. You, you really, yes. really focus in on, Hey, what am I great at? I'm really good at the marketing side. And then you partner with investors there locally. Yes. Go then meet with the sellers, close the deals and you guys have some sort of a split. Yep. And, and that's the part that I, I really want people to focus in on is if, if Dennis was doing all sides of that transaction, it would be much harder uh, to do to do this, you know, on a, a 40 hour week job and then right. trying to fit it in after hours. Now you could still do it, but most of those deals or a lot of those deals would not be able to be closed. They'd be closed by somebody else because you wouldn't be able to go meet with them when they need to be met with. Exactly. So I want to add that kind of disclaimer here that guys... If you have a full-time job and you love it, you need to figure out what you are great at on the real estate side and then partner with somebody else who has the time to do the other part. Um, if you love the negotiation and you've got the time to do that with the sellers, find somebody else who loves the marketing and, exactly. and they can drive it. And so you're working with you know several investors, maybe one, I can't remember, to do that side of it. Now let's flip it over to, we're, we're talking about some of the marketing, we're talking about some of the new marketing you're doing yep. because then you had more time uh, uh, during that right. time, you started to dabble in more things and, and right. try some things that, some are working and some you're still experimenting in. Right. But, um, when, when you were trying to kind of scale things up a bit and see if you could grow it, uh, what did you try? And were there any kind of blocks that you're running up against when you were trying to scale it up? You're like, man, I don't, I don't know how to go more than where I am now. But where right. were the um, yeah, no, great question. So the first thing I tried to do was, um, and I did, was uh, I've always heard about cold calling. So I, mm-hmm. I set up an offshore, you know, Central American cold calling. Well, I set up a, a, a cold calling situation where I had three Central American folks cold calling for me mm-hmm. um, on Mojo Dialer and then just going through lists. And I found it was so much work to manage that and the results were poor that I mm. bagged it. We did it, I did it for a little over a month. And so yeah. it just, I, you know, I think we did five weeks, um, cost a fortune and just really didn't provide results. And so mm. I kind of, I closed that off. Um, what I de- tried le- then was um, uh, Lead Sherpa, the text, mm-hmm. the text messaging, the, the compliant text messaging, which um, yep. is very important. And that has worked well, very well um, for me. And so I've continued to do that. But 
like we talked about before you pressed record, I'm doing that. I've been doing that myself uh, mm-hmm. because I've had the time. And so one of the things that, that I've had to change is I, I brought on, first of all, I brought in a lead manager because the volume, to be honest, we're doing, so this is little old me, Mr. Marketer mm-hmm. doing this full time or do, well, I'm averaging nine appointments a week, my mm-hmm. business. So, mm-hmm. which is really pretty good. So, mm-hmm. Um, so I had, I brought in a lead manager, a 30 hour a week lead manager. And then I just brought on about a week ago, um, a marketing assistant to do the Sherpa stuff. Mm. And so, and then we'll go on from there. So those are the two things I've tried. I, I bagged cold, cold calling. Um, I just couldn't find, I couldn't find the right fit for cold callers and the results are really bad. So I went on and nobody answers the phone anymore. It's yeah. like, that's the problem. And so, um, I'm finding the text messaging is, is, is doing really well. And then I've got, like we talked about, I've got, um, five new things that I've kind of, because I've had some time to think about it, I'm testing five new marketing niches or whatever um, that I just, it, it just hit me. And I, I kind of had my notebook. I've been filling out my notebook the last week going, oh my gosh, this, this one of them hit me like a bolt of lightning, this branding <laughs> one. It's like, oh my gosh, it fits me perfectly. I got a whole page and a half all written uh-huh. with like Mark Zuckerberg in his notebooks, right? So I'm <laughs> writing stuff down. Um, so that's what I'm, so I'm the, the, really kind of the, the story is, is that because I've started to outsource some of my, the work, it's given mm-hmm. me some time to just think like you, you know, I talked about before, which I, you know, working in real estate and everything, I've not, I never had time to really think mm-hmm. I carve out time usually at the end of every, every year to do that. But I really have focused on it over the last three weeks or so when I kind of know when I was going back to work, it's like, okay, what can I do? How do I make this work? Because I really like the trajectory of this business of how, mm-hmm. what it's doing. And I'm coming up with some great ideas to try. I don't want to lose all that momentum by going yep. to work. Yep. Right. And so I'm trying to figure out, okay, how do we do this? And what I do, another thing to my, one of my secrets, I've got these little voice recorders. I've got about 20 of them. Mm-hmm. These little micro, I, I want in every car, one in every one of my bags. And I, sometimes on the way to work, I will just dictate the entire time, you know, no, it's do this, do this, do this, uh-huh. ideas or whatever. And, and never, so I never forget them because it's not, they're on these things. Mm-hmm. And so it's been one of the, my, one of my best tools ever. And that's how, what, you know, how I figured out this branding thing. So I just like, oh my gosh, I'm, uh, I was just, you know, blathering into this thing for all the way home from, from a meeting that I had. So, um, so I, I want to dive into the branding thing yeah. here in a bit for sure. Cause, yeah. cause you, you've mentioned a couple of times and I'm, I'm, I'm big on branding as you yes. know, but before we do that, um, let's kind of talk about the bread and butter. Cause you talked about some of the, some of the new things you tested as you add more time, uh, you know, between, between the jobs, you're like, Hey, let me test some new things and see if right. I can grow it tested the cold calling didn't work for you. So you cut right. that off, but you gave it a good try. I mean, it wasn't yes. a one week or two week test. Right. And uh, the text messaging with lead Sherpa, that's working great. You're going to, you, then you plug someone else into it. And that's a big thing here, guys. If right. you are part-time or you're wanting to be part-time or you're just wanting to buy back your time, um, do the thing your, yourself first for a little while, uh, make it work. Okay. That way you know how it works and then plug someone in and train them how to do it. But what's your bread and butter, man? I know on the carrot side, you've made some really big moves lately. You're ranked number one on Google for some really good phrases. Number, number one and two for some really good phrases. Yeah, yeah. And I popped in right before we hopped in here, man, you're getting in the Detroit market, which is a really competitive market. Yeah. You're getting leads really consistently. I am very consistently. Yeah. So what's your bread and butter? Is it the Google organic? Is it something else that's bringing that five plus deals per month? Well, the same thing as we talked about before. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm still a direct mailer. I do all yep. my stuff in house. I do probates heavily. Mm-hmm. I've done probates for 16 years. And so I think I'm up to, I don't know, I, you know, the July of June or July of uh, 14 is when I got back on a probate train every week. I've not missed a week mm. mailing to probates ever since then, mm. not, literally not missed a week. And so that's really well do, going well. But again, like we talked about last time, my, the care, my carrot site. And since I've hooked up with this great SEO guy, um, mm-hmm. I, I bounced up in the rankings. It, it's doing well. And, you know, it's interesting. I'm getting more, I don't want to make, make this sound bad. I'm getting way more leads than I was getting before, mm-hmm. but I'm, so now I'm getting a lot of the marginal ones as well. And so my average deal size is a little smaller, but I'm getting mm-hmm. more of them because I'm, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm casting my net wider, which I'm totally fine with, obviously. Mm-hmm. And so that's gone really well. So my bread and butter really is it's um, and I gave up Facebook because they changed some of the, their, their targeting algorithms and I didn't really like the way they, the changes they made. So really it's direct mail. It's uh, carrot, obviously and carrot. Actually I make a little bit more money in carrot still than I do with direct mail. Mm-hmm. And then now it's the, the Sherpa, the, the lead Sherpa texting is doing really well. 
you know, I know that SEO is always going to be there. I know that direct mail is always going to be there, but I don't know that, sure, that, that texting is always going to be legal. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to really get what I can out of it right now. I, you know, I, Michigan just passed a law that, you know, we can't use RVMs anymore and texting mm -hmm. is getting harder and harder to do. And so I just want to, you know, I, I want to make sure that I'm continuing to block and tackle, which is direct mail and SEO while I'm doing some other stuff over here, all the sexy stuff. Mm -hmm when it's appropriate to do that, when I can, I can monetize it. That makes sense. Dude, that, that's, that's so important. I, I created a concept a couple of years ago that I call ebb and flow marketing, right? Yeah. And where uh, I've drawn it on the whiteboard a bunch of times, I've got a video on it, but if you guys kind of picture, you picture a whiteboard and then there's multiple colors and one of the lines is direct mail. One of the lines is SMS, RVM, you know, all yeah. the outbound marketing, it, you, you start to see it goes up and it goes down and it goes up as fewer people are using that marketing method, yep. right? Like the last year or two, um, there's been a lot of people going back to direct mail because they bagged it three or four years ago or even two years ago um, because the response rates were getting hard. And not in the last year or two, last six to 12 months. Yep. Uh, some people have been going back to direct mail, which is great. Um, but then they, they were bailing direct mail two, three, four years ago for text message and RVM mm -hmm. or RVM and then now text and like, it just goes like this. Right. But the thing is with your inbound marketing where people are seeking you out, that just keeps getting better because more and more people are using the internet every week. More and more people are, are getting adept to, um, engaging with things online, buying products online, things like that. And also just, you know, just getting more and more popular. So that keeps on going up yep. in a big way. And so like you said, it's, it's really good because you're blocking and tackling your stack and bricks. You're building momentum online. Right. That's going to keep getting better. And then you're, you're just, you've got your process down for probates, man, which is amazing. It's been working great for years yep. and you're just repeating it. And that's such a great lesson for people that you find something that works keep doing it, keep doing it just religiously and lock it down into a process and keep nailing it and then start adding other things on. Um, what are you seeing right now with, with SMS as far as um, your cost to acquire a deal compared to your other, other marketing methods right now? Well, before, um, before I started with doing the texting, my cost per deal, it's, it's, was under a thousand dollars. I mean, mm -hmm. it's probably four or 500 bucks. Cause again, I do really targeted direct mail. I'm not mm -hmm. sending 50,000 cards a month. I'm yep. sending 500 or 600 letters a month to a highly targeted list. I do a, it's a very expertly crafted mailing piece mm -hmm. to a very specific list. And so my marketing cost is really, it's a embarrassingly low. Mm -hmm. um, and what, what texting did was it doubled it. So now I'm, I'm still under a thousand, but I'm probably about $950 um, cost per deal. Cool. Which is still pretty good. That I think. Stellar. That's crazy. <laughs> right. Yeah. But again, I'm a small, I'm a small fish though, too. I, mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm doing my thing here and, and you know, I've got, now I've got two people and so I'm just a small operation. So mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty good. Dude, so you, you brought up the direct mail part of it. Yep. And, and one thing that you do really, really well, you mentioned it's a highly targeted, highly, highly niche list. And guys, guys, and gals, yep. those of you who are listening to this, I don't care if you're an agent or an investor, the more niche you get with your stuff, move into the next two, three, four years, the better. Right. Like, I don't, I don't care what it is. Even on the carrot side of things, the more you, the more niche you get with getting more content out there, using video posts, using location pages, the better it's going to, it's going to work. Um, just start putting out more volume of that stuff, getting more and more niche. And eventually you're just going to start to overtake everything. But the same thing with, with direct mail, and I'm not talking the volume part of it, but the, cons the volume of consistency, right? right? He's consistent every week. And so what are some of your secrets there as far as why it's working for you? Um, well, I think, uh, you know, the main thing is, and I, and I've tried to scream this from the rooftops to anybody to listen, but, um, I, I you cannot copy something that somebody else is sending. Mm -hmm. Um, when I go talk and I do talk to sellers and I, and I sometimes go on appointments with uh, my partners because I really want to get the, I want to get all the mail that they got to use as a swipe file. And I, sw I swear, Trevor, it's shocking what you, what you see. You, they, the, I talked to Charlotte. Charlotte was a lady I talked to back in December, uh, probate um, uh, personal representative. She received 30 pieces of mail. We may have talked about her before. So, you know, I, it happens quite a bit. 30 pieces, Charlotte in particular got 30 pieces of mail and 10 
texts, RVMs, phone calls. So mm. she was contacted 40 times by investors. Mm. And that's just, that's probate. So I'm sure her absentees are, are getting bombarded even worse. But, you know, when I talked to her, she said, oh yeah, I got, you know, 11 of the same postcard. I got 11 of the same letter. Yeah. You know, it's really you and one other guy sent, are the only people that sent anything different than all the rest of the people. Mm. I said, so mm. is that why you called me? She said, yeah. It's like, so I try to tell people. So one of the secrets is I spent, I, I think I, we talked about this last time. I shut my business down back in 2014. Mm -hmm. I took a week off before I started mailing again to really reset and redo all my marketing. I talked to a couple of really high priced national copywriters. And after I talked to one and he made some changes, I paid to have another one look at it just mm -hmm. because. Yep. And, and so, I mean, that's the kind of level of, of detail I want to be in because I'm attacking a very, very narrow niche. Mm. I want to put myself into the shoes of the person I'm mailing to, and I want to speak to them. Yep. And yep. that's what it, that's really what it takes. So if you're sending a card that you found on an internet, on the internet, that's cost you two cents a piece, it's like, you're going to be part of the 16 or 17 cards that somebody gets. They're just going to go and throw in the garbage can because mm. you're not differentiating yourself. You know, I don't care. You could send a, you know, a picture of you riding a lion or something like that, or riding an elephant or something. Like that. It's better than just sending a cheap card that you send. Mm. So you got to differentiate yourself. Do, do, do uh, the same applies to the online side of things, right? Yeah. So I know uh, if you, do you mind if I share? No, feel free. Web, no, website no. really quick. Yeah. So if you guys are watching the video version of this, y'all, so go to YouTube, make sure you guys are on YouTube too. Okay. If you're yeah. listening to the audio version, go to YouTube, find carrot or go to carrotcast.com and check it out. Cause I'm going to show some visuals here of uh, Dennis's site. So one thing that will pop up from time to time uh, with people is they're like, Hey, you know, I want my carrot site to look different, right? I, I, it looks the same as everybody else. Now here's the deal guys. Uh, about 75% of all carrot sites are using the default design uh, called Douglas and they don't change it. And so that's something yeah. we're doing on the software side of, side of things to kind of like, force prompt people to change their design. But one of the things I would suggest people do is guys for the phrases that you want to, you want to rank in, go to Google, just like Dennis did with direct mail, where he said, I want to see what all the direct mail pieces look like so I can look different and stand out, but better. Now make the Google searches that you want to rank for, and then click the first 10 results, click them all, bring them all up. You're likely going to find a bunch of carrot sites in there because it works. The platform works. And we'll talk about that here in a bit. So go with the system that works, but then now stand out and look and see what design they're using. You know, what, what's the carrot design that they're using? Or if it's not carrot, what are the elements that they, that they have? And then go use one of the designs on carrot that is least used in that market. Uh, Dennis has one of our premium designs on our advanced marketer plan. This is the, it's not the Aspen. The Aspen's the newest one. This is right. the Hemlock. Hemlock, dude. There we yes. go. Yeah. They're all tree names. I couldn't come up with it right away. <laughs> right. So he's using the Hemlock yep. and, and it's likely uh, one of the least used designs in the Detroit market. We have a lot of Detroit clients. Yep, so if is. you click on Dennis's site or one of the other carrot sites, his is going to distinctly stand out. Yep. And so that's one really quick step you guys can do on the online site. Click you know, Google searches, click the first 10 results on, on the page, see what design that they're using, go into carrot and use a different one, use a premium design like Hemlock or Aspen to really stand out way fewer people are going to use it. But then you did some other things too, that I really love what, what, what you did with it. And this is some of the work that you did with Gerald, uh, I'm, I'm guessing yep. is you came in here and you got your better business bureau thing up here. Most people aren't putting that credibility up. Your logo is nice, clean and clear. Uh, I was working with a client the other day that he does a bunch of deals. I was looking at his logo. I'm like, oh, that thing is so bad. Like it just, yeah. it was pixelated. It was terrible. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yours isn't fancy. It's clean right. and clear and professional. Like I like it, right? And then you come down here and what do you see? Uh, you don't have a video up here, which is perfect because we've tested out a lot of times people will put a video in the hero section. Almost all the time it makes your results worse. Yep. Um, but if someone is ready to opt in, they will. If they're not, they're going to go search for information. That's where your videos go. Right down here where he's got a picture of himself. He's got a real phone number. This is a guy. This is Dennis, like the guy that you're going to talk to. And then there's content, more credibility. And then they mix in the opt-in, the carrot opt-in boxes more. And they kind of break up some of the content. But guys, this page here shows case study after case study after case study. Great testimonials, right? So the key here is just like Dennis did with the direct mail, do that work in this competitive market to research your clients and go, what carrot side are they using design? Let me choose a different one. And now let me uh, build a lot of credibility into it. And you're going to beat them. You're going to beat them all day long. Are you guys seeing in this market right now more retail type of, of sellers come through 
uh, it seems like it's pretty common that we're hearing from a lot of people. Well, yeah, but I, what I, why I like carrot so much is that um, probate fluctuates. Probate definitely mm-hmm. has the ebb and flow. Um, and right now, you know, we, we're doing, uh, you know, I'm doing six, seven appointments a week in probates and 90% of them up, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to list. Mm. Rarely do we get a carrot lead that, that wants to list. They really, yep. they come to our site. They know we're investors. They know kind of what we're looking for. My how it works talks about repairs and that kind of thing. So they really, I'm a known quantity to them. And plus, honestly, I still answer my phone. I mean, it's, I, everybody's gonna, gonna give me a finger wag on that, but that's one of one of my competitive advantages is that mm-hmm. I answer my phone when fo- folks call me on my website because I want to talk to them and I want to understand their needs and that type of thing. And because I, I may be the only one in my market that's doing that, which mm-hmm. is which is positive. So, yep. um, anyway, so I'm I'm seeing a lot of retail on the probate side, but uh, on the Sherpa side and on the carrot side, it's it's a lot. It's mostly investor investor specific properties which is a great thing dude i love it. are you i can't remember if we talked about this on the last podcast are you working with any agents where you're like sharing those leads with them yes um you are yeah cool. well one of my one of my partners in particular that does um uh some of my my appointments is an agent and he gets mm-hmm. all the leads so it, cool. it works we keep it in the house so he gets he gets a double dip on those which is dude. great and, that, and, that, and that's so big. So that's one thing I'm heavy in right now. We're creating some really cool stuff behind the scenes yeah. that we call hybrid. And hi- hybrid, I think, is is it's not just the future. It's like where we are now. No. And yep. So if you guys are listening to this and you're not tightly integrated with an agent or you're not both, you're an agent and investor, if, if you're not that, you're going to be losing leads and deals. Because like Dennis was saying, a lot of the probate ones are, hey, I think I might want to list it. Yep. Tyler Ford uh, on our recent Market Leader Summit. By the time you guys are going to listen to this Market Leader Summit, it already happened. I'm pre-recording this before the summit, but on the summit, um, Tyler Ford shares he's an agent and an investor. He's crushing in Tucson with Carrot through Google Organic. Um, does dude amazing multiple multiple six figures in profits all organic carrot. He's a great guy. Yeah, such a good dude. Yeah. And so he he takes all of his leads um, where he goes talk with the sellers that are retail, tosses them over to one of his EXP agents underneath mm-hmm. him, and then they send out a direct mail piece that's not related to the investment side right. of things at all. The guy get the person gets it within a day or two. It says, hey, you might be looking at selling. Well, da 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 da. We'll help you get the most cash in your pocket. Da da da, like all this stuff, dude. He's he's coming up with multiple listings per month just from that strategy there. And what what a lot of investors are doing is they're saying, ah, oh, that leads trash. It's exactly. A kicker. It's blah. It's like no. It's just you serve them one solution, and your client didn't fit into your one solution. They were looking for this, and you just left multiple thousands on the table. And even worse, you weren't able to serve that person. You made it harder for them, where they have to go find somebody else now. Yep. Yeah, we That's need to way. find a way as as real estate investors to try to monetize every single lead, however we can. That's mm-hmm. the idea. That's what I what, what I told my partners and my my lead manager. Man, so let, let's let's kind of go back to it. we talked about some of the marketing that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, let's for this last little, little bit of the segment, I'd love to kind of talk and dive into the the part time thing again. Yes. So we we have a really good picture here and in the previous podcast for what you're doing on the marketing side. The previous podcast we dove in deep on on the carrot yeah. side, and we talked about why you chose carrot versus a building a custom site and all that stuff because you could yep. do that with the custom site. You get the skill set for it. Uh, so guys, go go listen to that 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 other that other podcast, but. Um, on, on, on the part-time side of things, if someone is part-time right now and they've got a 40-hour week job, how would you suggest that they make this work? Like, let's start with the time and schedule, first of all. And then next, let's go, what marketing and marketing methods would you, would you suggest that they spin up? And then third, uh, you do have people that you work with now. You're not solo. Right. And then third, right. uh, third, we'll kind of break down what should that team possibly look like to make that work. So the first thing, right. time schedule. What would you suggest that they do with their time schedule to make it work as a part-time investor? Yeah. So, well, first of all, um, I applaud you. If you're watching this, you've got a job and you want to get into real estate, I applaud you. This is a great time to do. There's never a bad time to do this. Um, second thing I'll tell you is do not spend any work time on this. This is not a work function. This is a mm-hmm. business and on the side. So yep. when I started Trevor, I, my kids were young. I did it at night evenings and weekends. And that's why I started doing direct mail because direct mail wasn't something I needed to be around to, you know, to do, I don't like for texting, that's best done during the day. So I didn't have time to do that. And so what I, if I were starting out again, I would probably do the same thing. I mm-hmm. would, and if I had the money, so this is another, another dirty little secret or a, a, a great benefit to having a job. I've got income coming mm-hmm. in 
right? Yeah. I've got working capital to spend on my business. I'm not worried about the next deal to pay for my carrot side or whatever. I've mm -hmm. got an income. And so I would do two things. I would say, A, for first week, I would really, I would probably start do, doing direct mail, pick, mm -hmm. pick a list to do because you can do it nights and weekends. And the second thing I would do, I'd spin up a carrot site immediately, mm -hmm. right? Now it's going to take some time to get some traction or whatever. Buy the three leads per day program. I can't say that enough. That is a mm -hmm. great program. It really put me on the track to being ranking high um, and go from there and then start there. Um, mm -hmm. And you could do those, both of those things in probably under 10 hours a week. Yep. You know, and you have a business and you, ha and, and you're instantly in business. Now mm. are you going to, is it going to take time to get some traction? Absolutely. It may take you a couple of months. Dirty secret. I didn't get my first deal for 11 months, mm. in mm. 11 months of mailing every week to probates to get my first deal. But then they, then they started to fall after that. So Dude, most people are quitting after yeah. two or three mailings. Or I one. know. I know, I know, I know. I mailed every week for 11 months and finally got a deal. And, and now was. hundreds of deals later, yes. here he is. Like guys, that, that right there is a huge right. lesson. And, and so many of the newer investors or agents that I talk to, they get really discouraged early on because they haven't made losing a good thing. Now, I, I, none of us like to lose, right? right? But I, I think we, we all have to know that losing or not winning for a period of time is, is, is a required part of the growth process. Sometimes right. it takes a little longer than we hope, um, you know, but if you stick with it, the kind of the thing that I always like to, like to think of is, is if you don't think it works, it's likely a limiting belief. And then I step back and I go, is this belief real? Like, is it right. real that I can't, that, that direct mail does not work? No, it's not real. Like I hear all the time that it works. So obviously I haven't figured out, is it real that, um, you know, ranking high in Google with carrot is going to be too hard and, and I can't do that because I'm in a big market like Dallas or Detroit. No, it's not real. It's a limiting belief. You just need to stick with and implement a real plan and get the right people around you and execute. Now it might take longer than you expect or longer than Joe, Joe Blow over there it took for him or her, right? But it does work. So everything after that is all between your ears. It's like, you know, for a fact that it works, you've seen multiple other people do it. It works for them. You just need to stick with it. And for um, Dennis sticking with it meant 11 months of direct mail yeah. every single week. Yep. Until it popped. And then he's like, do, Hey, let me, actually, let me ask you this. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember, do you remember, was there anything you changed? Like how, how did that first deal come in and why didn't one come in four or five months before that? You know, oh gosh, it's a, it's a story. So I was getting, okay. So 2004, I don't know anything about real estate. They mm -hmm. didn't have all the training or there were, there wasn't any training. So I got mm -hmm. a book. I, somebody said, Hey, you probates direct mail. And so I'm sending letters. I had no idea how much a kitchen rehab costs. Mm -hmm. So I'm going in on these appointments, getting laughed. I, I was going on five, six, seven appointments a month mm -hmm. easily during that 11 months getting la people would openly laugh at me for making these offers mm. yeah, 55,000 we sold it for 85,000 to the guy that you know came here last week it's like mm. oh I guess my my calibration's off a little bit <laughs> so what finally happened and it's a great story um it was a murder house mm. and the guy was on drugs he had sold all the furniture he had an extension cord in this house um he had basically killed his mom mm. and they pinned down his brother and so he had to sell because he had a meth habit. And so he basically had to sell. So mm. I tried to have this guy go away. I said, no, nah, I'm not interested. Um, after I went to see it the first time, he called me back a week later. I said, you know, you should, you got to make it a rental. You know, it's the best thing for you. You need money. And he, mm. and he goes, okay, yeah, I'll think about it. I just wanted to be get away from this guy more than mm -hmm. anything else because he was scary. It was scary. Yeah. Because he was on, he was on on drugs every time I talked to him and met him. Huh. Finally, he says no, no. He called me back three weeks later, two weeks later, and said, "No, Dennis, I want to sell to you." It's like, holy crap, what am mm. I gonna do? <laughs> so I made the next thing was I made him one of my famously low offers. I was like, okay, he'll never take forty thousand. So yeah. I said, okay, yeah, best I can do. It was a sixty thousand dollar house, as is. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want this thing. I want this guy to go away. I best I can do is 40 grand. I'm really sorry. Blah, blah, blah. I figure he's going to go away. He goes, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. so, and so I had, so we ended up closing on it. And it was, um, one of my best rentals for all this time. I just sold it last year. Cause I wanted, I want to keep with the brick stuff. It was a frame house. And I, yeah. I held it until last summer. Actually, I finally sold it last summer, made a, cool. a ton of money on it. That was my first deal. And so, um, it was, wasn't because of anything I changed. I just happened to be the guy that the guy kept calling. I built some trust with the guy. Um, but it just, honestly, Trevor, it was, 
it was i don't know it was a momentum shift or whatever but then it just started to happen for me yeah. after that i did the next one happened like three months later and the next one happened two months after that and mm. so all of a sudden it was like the dam broke mm. and i don't know it just the clouds part the light shines angels sing kind of thing and, and i just started to hit, get some traction with it mm. and so Seriously. i don't know what change i guess i just this is the data got assimilated into my head and i started to make you know good offers um, cause I still, and I was buying mostly rentals back then doing a couple wholesales and I still have most of the houses that I bought back then. Mm. They're still performing extraordinarily well. So, um, but it was a good time. And, mm. and again, what I said, just say, it's got to stick with it. You, it'll, yeah. it, it will, you will learn by losing cause losing sucks. Everybody hates it, but you got to go through the, you got to crawl through the broken glass in this business mm -hmm. to get the prize. It just mm. takes, it just takes it. And nobody's born knowing this stuff, mm. you know, dude. That 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 sort that sort is really good right there, guys. Yeah. Guys, so if, if any of you guys are three months in, four months in, six months in, eight months in, and haven't hit it, that right there, like that that story, right is what I want you guys yeah. to cling on to because it yeah. works. Like, so you seem to get around the right people and and also have the right systems, but also stay consistent with it. Uh, I, I know for me with Carrot, uh, and I had previous businesses before that and stuff, but. Um, with care, I didn't make any income personally myself for 18 months, right? Like I put all the money back in the business. Yeah. Then it started popping. It was about 18 months into the business because we had been stacking the bricks, like creating okay. content, doing exactly what we teach you guys to do using the carrot sites, putting them out there, converting people into customers and work great. Um, so the, the, the third part of it, so we, we talked about what your schedule would be like. We talked yep. about what you do with marketing. You said, mm -hmm. Hey, spin up some direct mail that you can do in your house and yep. you don't have to go to a big mail house and stuff like that. Pick a good list in your area, probate or something like that. And then uh, number two, right then spin up a carrot site. That's going to help you convert your direct mail better, Absolutely. but also the organic stuff does take some time. And when, when it does, it pops like Dennis has a bunch of seller leads in his carrot site right now. I was checking yep. out right before and he's ranked really high in Google in Detroit guys. And he wasn't the first carrot customer there. He probably wasn't the, fi the first 50 carrot customers there. I don't know, but he is now because he put in the work, right? right. He put our coaching calls and he hit us up and he did the work. Now the third part of the question was, was essentially Dennis, um, uh, you have people that you work with. And I think yes. this is a really big missing piece from most people who are doing part-time investing is they're, they're having this struggle. They're going, man, I know that I want to do this, but I just can't justify or can't find the time to do this business because they're trying to do it all. So um, what should people do to find those partners or find those, uh, those first people that they should work with to be able to close deals while having a job? And then what other roles have you found are valuable? Some of them we mentioned earlier, but right. um, what, what does the people situation look like ideally for a part-time investor? Well, first of all, you're absolutely right. And I want to emphasize that if you're doing this part-time, you really should not be doing both sides of the business. And both sides, I mean the marketing and then going to see the properties. Because mm -hmm. if you're working full-time, you probably can't get out during the day to see properties. And if you can't do that, you're going to get beaten out by the guys that are doing it full-time. Mm -hmm. So I would say become a good marketer because you've got the time to focus on one thing and one thing do it really well. I mean, you don't get paid to be Tarzan and say, I'm doing the whole thing myself and, and be the poorest guy in the block. I'd rather be a marketing guy, never go look at houses and so and, and give up half of my deal to the guy that goes and, and does that. Mm. And, and because I'm doing that, I'm partnering with you know, two and two or three of the very best wholesalers in this market because mm -hmm. they know I've got good lead flow and they're like, holy crap, yeah, we'll take as many as you can pass along, which is really good. Once you start to develop um, leads, any wholesaler worth, the, you know, in the right mind is going to want to partner with you mm -hmm. to, because that's the holy grail. The leads make this world go round. And so first thing I'd look for is the the top one or two or three wholesalers in the market right now doing the most volume. What I wouldn't do is is partner with a guy that does a lot of rehabs. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do, because that guy is going to look at your leads as, okay, is this a lead I want to rehab or not? If, he, if it's not, then he's not going to be very interested. You want to yeah. focus on specifically wholesalers. Because I tried that route. Mm -hmm. uh, the re rehabbers are some of the nicest guys, of some of my best friends, but I don't want to partner with them because they, they, you know, will segregate the lead quality based on whether or not they want to buy the house themselves. Gotcha. So, uh, you know, wholesale, find, find, and you need to have, you know, one is the loneliest number in this business. You don't want to have one of anything. And mm -hmm. so I have two to three partners at any one time because, you know, somebody goes out of town, somebody, and people get squirrely all the time. Like yeah. I, I joke around that painters, you know, you, painters have a shelf life of a year and then they get <laughs> squirrely and then they don't see them anymore. Well, partners do too. And so sometimes you've got to, 
tell partner A, okay, you're not focused on my stuff, so I'm going to give partner B the business, and, and partner A wakes up again. And mm -hmm. so you want to get at least two to three people to partner with. I would go to RIA meetings, find out, ask around who are the biggest, you know, you know folks that are that are wholesaling in your market, mm -hmm. and then go talk to them and say, listen, I. Going to have, I've got good lead flow. I want to partner with you. Let's work out a deal. That's the main thing. And I would figure that process out first um, and then do the stuff yourself. Now, if you have a hard time taking calls at work, then you're going to need somebody to answer the phones for you. Mm. I would definitely can, you know, not lots of great services out there. I've used them all. I don't personally like them very much. I would say hire somebody, pay them 10, 12 bucks an hour. And what I found is a great niche, honestly. Um, when I was looking for folks to hire, my wife said, you know, a bunch, you know, you know, we're obviously my kids are in college. We're, we're almost empty nesters. A bunch of my wife's friends are all wanting to go back to work now. Hmm, yeah. They don't want to get the hardcore career jobs. They want to do something part-time that's flexible. I'm like, holy crap, this is an unbelievable. I mean, these women <laughs> were CFOs and, and vice presidents of sales and stuff like that. Un incredible resumes. Now they want to have a 10 to 12 hour job and work 25 hours a week. Mm -hmm. Perfect fit. Mm -hmm. And so I've placed three or four of them in jobs with my friends around the area and other businesses and stuff because, and they're, they're doing great. They love it. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest reach out to folks, you know, I call them reentry moms, right? That That's a great niche. They want to work part-time. They're flexible. They can do, you know, cover the hours you need to have covered. And if you need to do more than one, hire, you know, for three different shifts, you're going to, you know, pay them 10 bucks an hour, whatever it is, and you can, they'll cover the whole day for you. Yep. So that's the that's the other role I would do starting out if you can't take calls during the day. Hmm. And then once you, I would say, Trevor, until you're doing 20 deals a year or whatever, just just do that. Yep. Um, I get, again, bank the money, you know, learn the process. And then if you decide you want to get any bigger than that, then it's time to think of maybe having a lead manager. Hmm. But just do it yourself. I mean, it's such a rush especially I'm an IT guy. Everything I do is virtual. I build a big system. Everybody applauds. And it's like, I don't ever get to see the darn thing. It's not like <laughs> building a building, but I'm doing real estate. It's really there. People, I'm mm. talking to people. I'm buying and selling houses. It's, it's the coolest thing ever. It's, it's just a great feeling. Dude. I, I, I love that. And guys, <laughs> De, guys, Dennis gave you guys the, the map there. So if you're, yeah. if you're a part-time investor or you're wanting to become a part-time investor, that right, there's a map. And, and, yeah. and at the end of the day, you've got to put in the work. You've got to carve the time out to do it. Get help guys and gals get help. Um, and this is, I think a good spot to wrap is, is on yep. this next little segment here is, um, you had mentioned at the start of this call that you're going back to get a job, but then you also tossed in there. You said, Hey, I, I, I don't want to ruin the momentum that I've gotten exactly. this past six months since I was off and I wanted yeah. to see how I can make this work. So are, are you thinking about, um, are you thinking about seeing if you can make this full time sometime soon? That's the idea. Yeah. But again, what we talked about, I don't know, I think before we, we press record is that um, my number two daughter is getting married by mm -hmm. the end of the year. So in December of this year. And so my wife is just my wife, my wife is just absolutely the best I have married so far above my level. It's, it's <laughs> incredible. But she's totally supportive. She says, I don't care if you ever get a job, you're doing great in real estate, you probably make yeah. your make your salary again this year that you'd made work and I'm happy. But then my daughter get, goes and get, gets engaged, which is very happy. She's a great guy. But that's going to be, you know, $40,000. Yeah. And so and my wife says, well, maybe now's not the right time because, you know, your salary, the extra money coming in from real estate was really good while you had a job. Yeah. So so I'm going back to work here another 10 days or so um, in my field in IT program management. And I've got these, you know, like a, these secret five things I'm going to be working on on the side hmm. as, because now I, my business is handled. I've got somebody answering the phones. I've got some of the marketing handled. I still do my direct mail, but I've got some time to kind of dabble in some of these other areas. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to, I'm going to really see if I can't teach myself how to do two X in real estate. Cool. Yep. And I really, I, again, and I, but again, I've got a job. I've got all the time in the world to, to try and see if I can do that. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the job gives me the ability to experiment and try different things and see if I can't make it into a full-time gig. Mm. That makes sense. Dude, there's, there, there's a couple interesting things here. So yeah. you, you'd mentioned, remember from our last podcast is yeah. like 77 deals in the previous year, this past or in 2019, it was a, a, 50, a 50, 56, yeah. which is amazing. And so there, there's a few optimization points possibly. So one of them is obviously doing more deals, right? Like it, it's, right. Uh, Jay Abraham is, is a big marketer that I've followed yeah. for years and years and years. Had a chance to meet him in 2010, hung out with him for three days and like just soak in his stuff. And he teaches that there's, I think it's three ways to grow a business. You can either get in more customers, you right. can uh, have those customers buy more often, 
mm -hmm. or you can increase the average order price, right? And so on the investor or agent side, I look at it the same way. I go, cool, one way is to get more deals coming in, so more, yep. more leads, more deals, uh, which takes it from 50 something to 70 and whatever the number is. Yep. Uh, you can either increase the, uh, that's number one. Uh, number two, increase the average deal size. So are there negotiation techniques that can do it better? Are there ways to take some of the leads and deploy them better and close more of the deals into leads. Um, then the next thing is how do you get those clients to do, to, to buy more often or to work with you more often. Right. So right. Um, there's some really cool things that Tyler Ford uh, does that I think it was in his last episode or maybe is in the market leader summit that we talked yeah. about, about it where he talks about how he's turning those into referrals. And so all the closings that he has, he then sends them out a package physically and, and um, with, with a card in it that essentially wow. is giving them incentive to refer people. Because if you think about it, those clients who are going through a certain scenario wow. or issue, they likely know people who are, who are in similar situations, um, kind of people running the similar circles. He says he always pulls deals out of that. So that's so many, dude, yeah. so, so many investors, they, they, they look at, at house flipping, right. Uh, agents, not so much, but the investors look at house flipping or wholesaling as a one-time transaction. I'm only going to work the seller once. But the thing is, he said, he's pulled so many deals out of, 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 of those sellers where it's multiples. They have another house that didn't come up in the original conversation, or they have a friend down the road or a family member. And those are the best people because they're going to come with a warm referral and all of those objections and blocks and bottlenecks are gone because it's yep. a warm referral to that person. So implement a referral program. Uh, so three different things, uh, ramp up and get more deals, which is probably the harder of the three. Maybe, I don't know, maybe not. Who knows? Uh, ramp up, get more deals. Number two, uh, increase the average deal size. So one of those ways for you is uh, possibly uh, if you're going full time, cut out the other investor, right? right. Like, but then, but then you, you would have to then go and, and do the other stuff. So that's obviously exactly. a decision for you to make there. And you'd, I'm assuming you guys, are you guys splitting it down the middle? Is that yes, what you're doing? 50, 50, yeah. So right yeah. there, I mean, that's going to double it, but it's also it going to double your time commitment to, to the business. Right. Well, and plus, honestly, again, great idea. And I've thought about that and that's what my mentor keeps telling me to do. But, you know, I'm already, we're, the thing I keep kicking myself, I'm working with three of the best guys in this market. So mm -hmm. if I go out there and do it myself, I'm competing against those guys. Yep. yep. You know, and so... Yep. I've kind of, and again, I'm not making, I am I'm making an excuse, right? So <laughs> I'll just admit it, but I, I'm, I'm kind of going, I'd rather get 50% of the deal multiple times than try and go get hundred yeah. percent of the deal. And even though it'd be a learning curve, like anything else, I probably should do that, but it's not something in the cards right now. Mm -hmm. so. No, dude. And, and, and that's, that, that's the cool thing about it is yeah. we, we all get to make our businesses. Right. Uh, so we so we do the things that we enjoy and, and we get to like settle yeah. in, into our sweet spot and you've got your sweet spot, which is awesome. And also, like you said, it takes those two or three people. So they collaborate with you. Um, yep. And then that last part is, like I said, is, is even working with them. Uh, this one thing I've seen done well is are there opportunities for them to um, go through other negotiation training or are there, are there things that they're dropping on some of those leads that they just don't know about, you know, right. are, are, are they going and making multiple offers where it's, you know, here's, here's the listing, here's the, this, and here's the, the fixing list. Uh, there's certain things there that they might be able to grow some of those, but that's actually, that. that's a really good idea. That's, I don't think we're doing that. I don't think we're optimized as well as we could have. That's a great idea. I appreciate that. So you could so. close more of those. And like I said, the yeah. last part that, that would be easy to implement, um, you'll have to test it out for a while and, yeah, and see yeah. how it works. It, it, it's kind of one thing that builds momentum and takes a while, but it's a referral program. Dude, it works. Absolutely. It, it works for sure. Um, what I want you guys to do is this. If you're a full-time investor and you're listening to this, everything that Dennis said, you guys can implement in your own businesses to grow your businesses even more. The things he's doing for carrot on the carrot side are amazing. Like uh, in the previous episode where Dennis was on it, we talked about how he would always reach out to us on support and I would, he'd be on the coaching calls and, and he's yep. crushing it on the carrot side, just getting so many inbound leads coming in. And three the, lead per day, three lead, keep telling people three leads per dude, day. $100 training guys. Know, right? Let's it's go through and do it. 10 times that at least. Yeah. yeah. hundred times that. Yeah. I, I love it. So, so go do those things. If you're, if you're a big investor, like ramp up this stuff, guys, this is the thing. Cause if you're all in on the text message marketing thing, I was at a big, a big event this last week and they're all in the text side of things. I'm just going, man, I love it. Like you said, double down on it right now. Like yep. do it. 
uh, do it. But here's the deal. You stake your business on that thing. You're going to be in 18 months, maybe looking back going, oh man, I got to rebuild this thing from scratch because I don't have other more consistent, more predictable, safer lead sources. So yeah, the blocking nail, tackling. Yep. Oh, do you Absolutely. have blocking tackling? Yep. And if you're a part-time investor, guys, listen to this episode twice. Go back and listen to the other one with Dennis and listen to the one uh, with Paul DeCampo that we have coming up on how he's doing part-time investing as well. So Dennis, I so appreciate you coming and spending the time with us. It's really cool seeing you as a massive success story uh, for us at Carrot, but also, man, it's just really cool showing people that a great example of what they can do to build a business that truly matches what they want, not what society or the or the uh, real estate masterminds say you've got to do to be successful. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And that's you what were, I love about this. Like I said, waving the, I'm waving the flag on this. You can do this part time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And enjoy it, right? Like you're enjoying yeah, it. It takes some of that stress off because you've got the paycheck coming in and, yep. and, and all that stuff. But uh, to close this out, man, if, if there's someone that is a part time investor or they're wanting to be, uh, what are some kind of final words of wisdom you've got for them to encourage them through, but also to, to, to help them uh, that next phase? Just keep going, you know, keep, find something and stick, stick to it. You, you've got to test stuff for four five, six months, whatever you try before mm -hmm. you want, you give up on it. And, and, and again, I would get to that point four five, six months and what, do what I did. I kept going because I, I knew I had this big need, big want, this big why that I could not give up. And because honestly, what else are you going to do? If you're not going to do this and you're going to, you know, what else are you going to do? You know, mm -hmm. stick with your direct mail. It will work after a time, you know, but give it enough time to, to work. So you need to try something for a period of time until you determine that it doesn't work, either will or won't. But then give it the time to give it, I'm, I'm blabbering here, but give it the time it needs to determine whether or not something will work. Mm, I so love don't it. Quit. Don't quit. Dude, Dennis, I appreciate you. Uh, guys and gals, Dennis with Metro Detroit Home Buyer. Uh, go check him out. Follow him. Work with him on deals. If, if you're there in the, in the Detroit market, work with Dennis. Like He's an amazing guy and, and also uh, just a, a, great, a great person to work with there. Closing deals, whatever it is. Go, go connect. MetroDetroitHomeBuyer.co. <laughs> but to Dennis, thank you very much. Guys and gals, if you've enjoyed this series, the Part-Time Investor Series, let us know. Go over to Apple Podcasts. Go over to Spotify. Give us a rating and review. And let us know how, you, how you've enjoyed this episode of the entire podcast uh, as a whole. We get fuel from that stuff. So please go over there and do that. And Dennis, thanks, man, for being an amazing part of the Carrot community. It's been a great example uh, for all of us to follow. Thank you, Trevor. Appreciate yeah. being on once again. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Have an amazing rest of the week. We'll yeah. talk soon.